Hello again, AZ at Digital Goja Showrooms. And yes, this is exactly what you think it is. This is the new Canon EOS M5 kit with their new EFM 15 to 45 IS STM. Mm, what a mouthful. I believe this is going to be a very popular camera. If this video helps you out, remember to hit me up with a like button underneath and subscribe to our channel so you can share it with your fellow photographers and videographers. And when in Miami, visit Digital Goja Showrooms. Remember, Digital Goja Showroom has one of the nation's largest in-store selection of authorized Canon cameras and lenses. All right, this is the moment we were waiting for, the unboxing of the EOS M5 with the 15 to 45 IS STM M series lens. Open it up and of course there's your instruction manual, three different languages, manufacturer's warranty, of course this is Canon USA so that means it's good if it's purchased in the US and if it's purchased from an authorized dealer like Digital Goja. And of course they're now touting their online photo album with free, look at that, up to 10 gigs of free storage. Wow look at the size of this nice and small very compact I think yeah this kit combination with this lens just weighs a little bit over 21 ounces look at that look at the nice dials on here that's something that we wanted we wanted some dials it does have a beautiful 3.2 inch 1.62 million dot panel LCD and it is touchscreen we'll go into that later on when we have the review and notice it flips all the way around if you want to do a selfie that's pretty impressive so yeah 24.2 million pixels APS-C size CMOS sensor there it is mirrorless APS-C size that's awesome thank you and let's see what else is in here here's the lens the 15 to 45 millimeter and it's their newest design this is interesting you can now extend it and there's your working lens front element is 49 millimeter so any of you that have nifty 50s or other filters you can use a very common 49 millimeter uv cpl and nds are available on the market it is an image stabilized lens up to three and a half stops and it does have a stepping motor what else is in here? There we go. We have your USB, standard micro to USB 2.0, not 3.0. Well, I guess they want you to use the Wi-Fi. There's your EOS M strap. And of course, your wall ward that plugs in directly the LCE 17 because it does use the LPE 17 battery. Universal voltage from 100 to 240 volts, USA plug of course, and of course, last but not least, your very popular LPE17 battery. All right, so remember, this is a 24.2 megapixel camera. It is their APS-C CMOS sensor. Notice how it is a mirrorless, so there is no reflex mirror in there. It's meant to work just like a, the way that I can describe this is this is a baby version of the ADD. It is just now the smaller mirrorless version of it. It has their tool pixel AF CMOS and their new video engine, the Digix 7. The ISO now works anywhere from 100 to 25,600 ISO. And it does have the capability of shooting anywhere from 1 4 downs to a 30 second exposure. It even has built in time lapse that it creates movie for you. It has high speed sync, does have a built in flash. I mean, it's small. You know, I think the guide number on this I read is not overly fantastic, but guess what? It does the job nice and compact. But the beauty of it is that you also have a hot shoe so you can work with your favorite flashes from Canon 
whether it's the 430 series or the 600 EXRT series. I don't know if I go with the 600 on this guy. This is pretty small for that big, huge flash. Lots of dials. You have your compensation button right over here on the top. You have a fully programmable function button in the corner. You have your dial function button here and you have your capability of setting your shutter speed and they also give you the touch capability of changing your exposure. Of course, they put video on here and yes, yeah, it's not 4K, but look, Canon knows that 4K just isn't going to work in a small body like this. So if you want 4K, you're gonna to have to get it in some of their larger cameras or maybe their Pro C series. But it does give you for, uh, full 1080p at up to 60 frames per second and it is fully image stabilized in video. It's electronic five axis image stabilization. So that's going to guarantee that you have some nice steady video, even if you're doing it handheld. Speaking about handheld, I can't get over the fact that this thing barely weighs 22 ounces. That is incredible. This is something that we've been waiting for from Canon for a long time, that they take a small mirrorless camera seriously. Now remember, it has a 3.2 inch, 1.62 million dot touchscreen. It's a touch panel. Hey, notice how it moves around so you can do selfies or you can see my beautiful assistant there. There's Adam. And it is fully programmable so you can do all your settings. You can even move around your cue settings all on the touchscreen. So they gave you full functionality on the touchscreen. I love that feature. They also added a feature where I can actually focus while looking through the electronic viewfinder. Speaking about the electronic viewfinder, built in, absolutely important, 2.36 million dot. So it gives you a nice crisp 100% view and it has almost non-noticeable blackout when you're shooting at high speed. And what do I mean by high speed? Because absolutely this guy is a beast when it comes to shooting. You can shoot up to nine frames per second in RAW. Of course, that's on locked AF and about seven frames per second when it's doing tracking. That means it'll shoot up to 20 RAW images in the continuous shooting mode. And let's see here if I have this guy set to shooting. No, let's have it on one shot. Let's see here. Switch it over to high speed shooting. So, and that's at that S section. Let's try a faster shutter speed. Yes, this guy can stop any kind of action that you throw at it. So, kudos to you, Canon, for doing that. Wireless capability, of course, it has Wi Fi, IEE 802.11b, G, and N, and now Bluetooth. They added Bluetooth capability to have a more stable and secure connection. Of course, it does work with your LPE17 battery, which gives you about 295 shots. That's another one of my favorite features. And it does work with your SD, HC, XC capacity, which is UHS-1. So that means that you can do the high-speed cards on there to be able to do your fast raw shooting and your full HD video. So there you have it. These are some of the basic features of your EOS M5 mirrorless from Canon. All right, so this is their EFM mount, which is for APS-C format. It's a 15 to 45 millimeter, like I said, F3563, so it is a variable aperture. Very small and lightweight. This guy weighs less than five ounces. Very easy to carry. This will be the equivalent of a 24 to 72 millimeter in a full frame or 35 millimeter equivalent. Has three aspherical elements, one glass molded aspherical element, two precision molded aspherical elements, which give you great optical design to reduce chromatic aberrations and distortion. It has optimized lens placement to reduce flare, which is great because I guess you would have to get an auxiliary lens hood for this. There are some third-party ones because here's the thing, it's a 49 millimeter diameter filter thread size. So that's becoming more and more popular in today's 
world of lenses. You can pick up some really good UV, ND, and CPL filters for it. It does have full-time manual focus override for you videographers and photographers that want to tweak your image. It has optical image stabilization built in that compensates up to three and a half stops, which means in combination with the EOS M5 that has digital image stabilization and this, you're going to be able to do some incredible videos with this guy. It's a new retractable design. I mean, it's new to Canon. It's been out for a while from other manufacturers, but notice how you release it and how now the lens is extended for full use. And you do have the connection mount on the back for your EOS M series connection for all your Canon mirrorless cameras, of course, including the new EOS M5. It does have an STM motor, that's your stepping AF motor, which means it doesn't give you an issue when you're doing video. Nice and smooth zooming, and when you retract it, it becomes really compact. So this is something that you can throw in your camera bag along with other M-series lenses and also the adapter with your standard EF lenses for your mirrorless design. So there you have it. The Canon EF-M 15 to 45 millimeter IS STM lens in graphite. By the way, it is also available in a retro silver design, but in the kit, it does come in the graphite finish. Now that we've taken a look at the EOS M5, we're going to do a frequently asked question video. This one is going to have all the questions that I found online on Amazon, on eBay, about how to use the EOS M5. And they're separated in beginner and advanced. Here are some beginner questions asked about the Canon EOS M5. Does it have a touch screen? Yes, a nice large 3.2 inch. Notice how I can actually touch focus wherever I choose. So I can go ahead and pick where I want it to focus. And I can angle it. So notice how I can actually move the screen to the corresponding angle that I prefer. Plus it gives me access to my menu. So I can do anything that I choose to in the menu it could all be changed with the touchscreen. So yes, Canon did a great job with their new 3.2 inch touchscreen. How much does the EOS M5 kit cost? Well, this kit, which is the current one that's available with the EF-M 15 to 45 IS STM lens is $1,099. If you just want to buy the body alone, which will also be available, that will be $980. Does it have a creative mode? Yes, they did. This has been really popular on some of their pointing shoots. It's the, the, on the dial, it's the little diagram with the camera and the star in the top. Turn it on, and now you can go ahead and choose which mode you want to do. You want to change your color tone, saturation, contrast, brightness, and you can even change the blurring of the background, whether you want it blurred or not. And again, the beauty of it is that I can do it with the touchscreen, so you can see the effect right away. Nice feature. They made it really simple to be much more creative with the EOS M5. Is it made out of magnesium or plastic? Well, they don't use the term plastic. It's a polycarbonate. It's very well put together, honestly. That's the reason why they can make this camera just a little bit shy of 22 ounces in this combination with the 15 to 45. Very sturdy, feels great in the hand, but it's not magnesium alloy. That way you also have the capability of working with Wi-Fi and their new Bluetooth connection. Can I use Wi-Fi? Well, not only Wi-Fi, they added also Bluetooth for a much more secure connectivity system. So we go into the menu and scroll to the toolbar and there you have your wireless settings. You have your Wi-Fi connection and notice how you can connect it. I have it set up for an iPhone 
or you can also connect it to a wireless printer. You can also set it to even a DLNA TV set monitor. So they made it really easy and secure to connect wirelessly to your smart devices. Can I crop an image after I shoot it on my EOS M5? Absolutely, and they made it really simple with this nice big 3.2 inch screen. So there we go, we have a picture of Digital Goja showroom from the outside. So we're going to hit the Q set and we're going to set crop image. You can change the perspective, zoom in there. And then we go over here to crop and save, save new image. Boom, now you have the new image. Wow, look at that. So yes, absolutely, it allows you to do your post editing for your crop right in the camera. Does it have an HDR mode? Yes, it does, and they made it really simple. It's on your command dial, hold it down, set it to the two interlooping circles, and you now have your HDR mode, and you can change your different version. You have Art Vivid, you have Art Bold, you have Art Embossed, Natural, and then back to Art Standard. Very simple to do HDR mode with the EOS M5. Does it have a hybrid mode? Yes, that's become really popular with Canon. There's your hybrid mode where it does clips and video and combines them in camera to get basically the way to explain it is like a trailer. So that's your hybrid mode on your EOS M5. Can I use my Sony E-mount lenses with my M5? No, well, you know, they kind of look similar. That's the reason why I think people are getting confused because of the size. Here I have a very popular Sigma 31.4 in the E-mount, but notice the connections are completely different. Can I change the ISO? Absolutely, you just can't do it on Intelligent Auto. You have to go to at least program and of course all your other settings. But this dial right here, the dial function, I can go ahead and switch it if I want to do white balance or press it again and switch it over to ISO. And then I can change my ISO, you know, as high as I want to. I mean, this guy says you can shoot at 25,600. I'll be doing a video later on where we're actually going to put it to the test to see. And I can go all the way down to ISO 100. Is it the same sensor as the Canon EOS ADD? Well, it's the same size. I don't know if they went ahead and recycled the sensor and they're putting the same sensor in the EOS M5, but it's the same size APS-C sensor. Notice how they're pretty much identical here. Does it have a built-in flash? Well, yes it does. A lot of people thought that this camera wasn't going to have one, and there it is right there. It does have a small built-in flash. The guy number is like 18, so it's there to help you out. But the beauty of it is that it does have an external hot shoe, so you can work with some of the more popular flashes out there. Here I have the, the new Canon Speedlight 430 EX3 RT. Mounts on there, and it works fully as one. Notice how it fires perfectly and it has no issue with focusing and with using the full TTL when it fires. Here are some advanced questions asked about the Canon EOS M5. Is the EOS M5 good for vlogging? Well, they did a great feature by this screen doing this. But remember, their tripod goes over here, so I would suggest maybe using your wireless smartphone to use it as the monitor while you're vlogging, because it does have the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth built in. But this is the way that I would suggest it, because remember, your tripod socket is under here, so you have to use that other solution. But it should do the job for you. Does it 
Does it have dual Pixel AF CMOS? Absolutely. This is just like your ADD and you can pick the focusing however you want. Just make sure you don't touch this because it switches over to electronic viewfinder and it has the, the focus drag. I love that feature where you can nice and gently bring it into focus wherever you want. So if I want to have it focus in the background or bring it over here and focus on the on the logo, I can do so by just dragging it across. Can I record 4K video? No, this one doesn't do 4K video, but you do have the capability of shooting at 60 frames per second at full 1080p. And notice how I can change it in the menu here. I can go to as down to 24 frames per second. And if I go to not full HD, I can shoot at also 60 frames per second. And at VGA, at 640 by 480, at 30 frames per second. Does it have high speed sync? Yes, it does, but of course it has to be with a compatible flash. Here I happen to have very popular, the 430 EX3 RT. Put the flash on the camera. This is a nice size, compact locket. Turn on the camera. Let's go into our menu. And we're going to go into our camera menu and notice that I'm in the fifth folder. Let's go to flash control. Gotta get used to the touch screen. Here we go, external flash settings. Click on that. Oh, it works better when you turn on the flash. Now we do it again. There you go. So there's your ETTL wireless zoom auto. Here's your settings. So you have first curtain, second curtain, and there you go. High speed sync. So now I can go ahead and choose, you know, really fast shutter speed. So if I want to shoot at one, three, thirty-two hundredths of a second, I can go ahead and do so and fire off and I can get the flash to work perfectly every single time. Does this bother you? Beep, 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 beep. Well, you can get rid of the beep. Go into the menu, go to the tool setting and we're going to go to the third folder. Click on where it says beep and turn it off. So now, well, you actually have to turn it off. There we go. So now the beep is gone. Now it still has a shutter noise. You can't get rid of that. It doesn't get completely silent, but you did get rid of that noisy beep. The beep is gone. Does it have IBIS? Yes, it does, but it only works on video. It's electronic image in body image stabilization. We go into the menu and you're going to go into the camera menu and you can touch over or scroll over to the fourth folder and move down to IS settings. Activate that and here you can switch it to continuous or off. So let's activate it and you have standard and you even have enhanced if you have, as they say, vigorous hand movement probably a lot of movement involved, I would set it to that. All right, so can I process in my camera my raw images? Absolutely. You don't have your computer, you're on about, and you want to transfer your files through the Wi-Fi Bluetooth setting to your tablet or smartphone. They made it really simple. So you first playback, shows you the raw file, hit menu, you're going to go into your third folder and scroll down to raw image processing, select. Now you have the image, hit set, menu OK, and then you can use shot settings and customize it for processing. Makes it really simple to process and send it right to your smartphone or tablet. Can I program my dials and buttons to do certain different Characteristics? Absolutely. But we have to go into the menu first. So we go into menu and you're going to go into your custom menu setting and scroll down to where it says 
custom function number two others and now you can actually go ahead and reprogram your dials and buttons to have different designated functions that's pretty impressive that way you can set it up to your liking yes they thought of how many of us out there like to work on manual focus so we're going to go into the menu and we're going to go into the fourth folder and look at your setting for focus peak settings and you can actually activate it here and you can pick high or low level in the color and you can actually choose the color that you prefer so if you want to do yellow set it up and you notice how it changes to yellow when it's in focus that's pretty impressive does it have clean HDMI out for recording no I'm afraid not they gave you micro HDMI to HDMI but that's just for playback purposes that does not allow you to record through here does it have auto exposure bracketing absolutely we'll go into the menu setting and we're gonna go into the camera and we're going to switch down to the fourth folder and that's your auto exposure bracketing and here you can actually change up to three stops difference for three images notice how I can actually set the amount of distance by the amount of the exposure whether I want negative or positive and I can change the amount that I want I can choose however I set it hit OK and that way it'll take multiple images and gives you auto bracketing can I change my quick function menu absolutely you now have the capability of going into your Q menu and predetermining which one of these you want activated so we go into the menu and we're gonna go to the second tab for camera and switch down to and again you can do it this way or remember you have the capability of touching on the screen and I can go ahead and now de-click or add whatever I want to be on my quick function menu that's a fantastic feature this is something that was available in their higher-end cameras it's now available on their new EOS M5 does it have a built-in leveler yes it does all you have to do is access your information by hitting the info button and there it is it gives you your orientation for your pitch and yaw and horizontal too so all that information is being displayed on the info section of your screen makes it very easy to make sure your camera is completely leveled does it have a microphone input yes it does it does have built-in mono microphone connection but honestly if you're gonna do professional audio you want to use an external mic so notice how here we have the 3.5 port so that way you can connect your external microphone whether it's a condenser or a lavalier they did not give you a headphone jack they only gave you a microphone jack so if you're looking for a headphone jack it does not have one but it does have for external microphone input <music> 